Hi, my name is Eric Rintamaki, and today I'm going to teach you all about hunting you for lights. Uh, I'm going to teach you everything about lights, everything about the stones, where to pick, what to bring with you, and just a little bit of knowledge, just like if you're taking the tour with me. So a lot of people can't make it all the way up here to Michigan, or they want to hunt where they live, can't make it all the way to where I am. So today we're going to show you everything you need to know. What is a Uper light? What lights to use and where to go? So what is a Uper light? A Uper light is a cyanite rich in fluorescent soda light. And you might ask, what is a cyanite? A cyanite is a granitic type rock or a basalt that is lacking in quartz. So it's much softer than granite. So they would be a granite, but they're lacking in quartz. So how did I discover Uper lights? Well, I'm an agate picker and I decided that one day I was going to take a mineral detection light out and look for agates at night on Lake Superior beaches because they're getting so hard to find. So I went out to Vermilion at about two o'clock in the morning, three nights in a row, I didn't find anything. On my fourth night, I was on my hands and knees, literally on my hands and knees, about three or four inches away from the beach and found three little stones. So I ran home as fast as I could, Googled fluorescent orange minerals in Michigan, couldn't find anything. So I ended up sending these stones off to California to my buddy Gabe Reyna. He's a geologist and a fluorescent mineral collector. And he told me that there were a cyanite rich in fluorescent sodalite. I asked him, how can I sell cyanite rich in fluorescent sodalite? He said, just make up a name for him and go from there. So I picked the name Uper for where I'm from, where I discovered the stones, light they light up, and Uper light was born. Uh, later that year, I sold some stones to the Michigan Mineralogy Project. They contacted me and told me they thought I might have found something new for the state of Michigan. So a couple months later, they got back a hold of me and told me I did find something new for the state of Michigan that sodalite had never been found in Michigan before, at least reported. and. They ended up publishing me in the Mineral News and I'm later going to be published in a book called The Mineralogy of Michigan. It's the 386 mineral discovered in Michigan. And you can find them right here on good old Mother Lake Superior. All right, you might be wondering where can you find Uperlites? Well, I've personally found them in a bunch of different states and on a bunch of different Great Lakes. So, so far, Lake Superior, Lake Michigan, Lake Huron, Lake Erie. Um, I found them in Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Indiana, Illinois, and even in Minnesota. Um, I found them in gravel pits, farm fields, riverbeds, landscape rock, and even in driveways. So anywhere the Great Lakes took stone, the glaciers from the Great Lakes took stones and deposited them, they're here. All right, before we get started, there's a few things you're gonna need. First, use a glow stick on a stick. Here's our path coming down to the beach out at Lake Superior. We're gonna stick this in the sand, crack it. This'll mark our way back. You always wanna have a way back. And using a glow stick is the absolute best way to do it. Also bring a white flashlight, um, bring a backpack, something to put your stones in. As this from the hardware store with a piece of tape, I never have to take my backpack off. Every time I bring bug dope if there's lots of bugs. There's no bugs because we have a little bit of wind. Uh, bug nets are kind of essential a lot of times. The little moths and the bugs are attracted to the UV lights, so they will eat you alive if you don't bring protection. Um, as you can see, I'm wearing rubber boots. Rubber boots, great for if you want to go into the water. Be very careful at night going into the water. Um, long pants, long sleeves. Um, always bring a drink, a snack. Um, never go alone. Always go with someone else and always tell someone that's not going with you exactly where you're going. So no, scout the beaches during the day, figure out where you're gonna go. You don't wanna get lost out here. So now I'm gonna tell you 
how to hold the light. You want to hold the light like you hold a pencil, like you're going to write your name on a wall, okay? And what you want to do is you want to get down on the rocks. We'll get down on the rocks right now. You're going to stand in one spot. You're not going to move. First, we're going to wait for dark. For the purposes of this video, we're going to do it a little before dark. But you really, really want to wait for dark. So we're holding our light like a pencil. And what we're going to do is we're going to paint the beach. We're going to stand up nice and straight. We're going to hold the light up at a good angle. So we're not going to hold the light down here like this. This will hurt our back. And then instead of using a nice wide beam, you're using a tiny little thin beam. So we're going to use the whole potential of this light. We're going to start down by our feet. And we're going to paint up and down and up and down. And if you don't like the up and down, you can go back and forth like this and just slowly get closer and closer to yourself. But you want to hold the light up at a good angle and paint everything. If you don't find any stones, take two steps and then do it again. You're going to paint everything and you want to paint everything two or three times because these stones like to lay there in layers. So as you can hear the waves coming in right now, they push a layer of stones in and then the next layer of stones comes in on top of it. All right, so walking in your direction, you can see this here. But if you were to be walking the opposite direction, you can't see it. So after you've done paint the beach, take two steps, paint the beach, take two steps, paint the beach, take two steps. The third time, I want you to turn around and paint the beach behind you because just you walking on the beach will knock over stone and expose new stones. Most of these Uperlites are not going to be sitting right on top. They're going to be buried on the beach under other rocks. So once it gets super dark, it makes them much easier to see. Using proper lights and proper techniques, you're going to do so much better than you are with bad lights and bad techniques. I see people on the beach all the time that aren't a part of my tour that come down to the beach and they're just flying down the beach. They're going way too fast. Even a slow walk is way too fast. You want to just stop right directly where you're standing and look in a 360 even right where you are before you move anywhere. Go super, super slow. The slower you go, the better you're gonna do. All right, so let's talk about some laws in Michigan. Michigan has a 25 pound per person per year law of collecting stones off any state properties. If you are on a private property, you can collect as much as you want. And that, the biggest one anyone has ever found on one of my tours is about 12 pounds. My personal biggest is only seven pounds. So there's a lot of people finding bigger ones than me. So anywhere on the here on the beach, you can find euperlites from the big stones up in the high and dry to the stones in the middle to the stones all the way down towards the water. Big, little, or small, Uperlites can be anywhere on the beach. So now I'm gonna go over lights a little bit. Um, there's two main styles of lights. There's the unfiltered lights with a bunch of LEDs that throw off a lot of purple light. They're very hard to use and a lot of stones will not show up with them. Now what we're using are these, the convoy style lights with a filter. These lights are six watts versus one watt for the big LED lights. And these will make just about every stone that's fluorescent, fluoresce on the beach. Also, if you want to take pictures or video, these lights work very, very well. So, I've told you where you can go look for Uper lights, what states you can look for them in. Here in Michigan, there are two or three places that you cannot go Uper light picking. One 
is if you go to Whitefish Point and go to the right towards the east, that is U.S. Fish and Wildlife property that is off limits for any rock picking during the day or at night. And then any national park such as the um, Pictured Rocks National Lakeshore, that is also off limits. So there's no rock picking there during the day or at night. All right, so you have a Uper light and you're wondering if you cut it, does the pattern run all the way through? Yes, it does. Uh, about 99% of the stones I've cut, the pattern runs completely through the stone. So whatever's on the outside is also on the inside. So, so far, we've noticed about six different patterns and combinations of those same patterns. So pattern one, the snowflake or flower pattern or plume pattern, a little butterfly looking pattern, as it's been called, that's pattern one. Uh, pattern two, the galaxy pattern. Looks like a bunch of stars and it's gonna be very bright little stars all over, little pinpoints. Number three, the nebula pattern. It's going to have some stars in it, but it's also gonna have a purplish color, which I've been told is either shelite or fluorite, which both exist here in Michigan. Also, we have what's called the jemmy pattern. The jemmy pattern is just, the whole stone is completely loaded, all soda light. So, I only have two or three that are completely all soda light. And typically those ones are a tannish colored stone with black horn blend spots. And then there's what's called the spray paint pattern. It looks like somebody went ch -ch 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 and spray painted a stone orange. Very, very fine little tiny dots of sodalite. And then the last one is striations. So that is where there was a seam or there are veins running through the stone. And a lot of times you'll have the veins and the striations and the flower pattern comboed into one. And every once in a while, you'll get some other colors like teal and blue and purple in the stones. And I've been told that it's most typically shelite or fluorite. Oh, move your light out because that, that light's uh, kind of purplish. Won't show it like this one will. See if I can find it again. Okay. Oh my God, I see it. there it is. It's a little guy, but we'll put the light down and pick her up. Yoo-hoo, the uh, first one. I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what. Let me, uh, woo! Try not to get all wet. Hey, right, this is my Raymond Wu. 365 nanometer light. You can see it's going, but looking at the beach, it doesn't look like I'm shining anything. You don't see any visible light from it. But as soon as I hit a Uper light, it will light up. We'll see if we can't find one here. Let's see if we can't find one here somewhere. Oh, there's one. Can you see it? There we go. Super light. Take the light away. Looks like nothing. Put the light down. Pick it up. You can see. All the way around the stone. Take it up in the light. Doesn't really look like much of anything. And as you can see, it doesn't look like anything's coming out of the light. But we put the Uper light back, and you can see it's coming out quite well.
little bit of underwater footage, I figured. It's all right. Yeah. I didn't tell you where it was at. You found it on your own. But see how it's all buried by other stones? See, all buried. Perfect. There you go. You're on the board. Oh, look at right here. Another one. That quick. <laughs> Doesn't take long. And we're, now we're going to take this. We're going to put it down the Uper chute. You can see that. A little tube for the. <laughs> There's another one. Right on. Down the chute. hunting is getting very, very popular here in the upper peninsula, but there's one. Ah. Another one. In the backpack she goes. <laughs> it's a good big one. Oh my god! I told you it's a good big one. I know it. I'm happy for you. <laughs> I'm happy for you. Oh my God! Another one right next to it. Two feet away. That's why I say always do a 360 when you find one and look around. They tend to hang out together. Those are two big ones. Yeah. That is a beauty. Yeah, look see. at that. Ooh, got some big ones. A big one and a little one. Yeah, beautiful. And don't forget, you should always use eye protection. UV eye protection is always good to use with UV lights. Um, long wave is not as dangerous as mid wave or short wave lights, but there is health risk in not using eye protection. I always have eye protection. I talked to my eye doctor, made sure that I got the UV protection on my glasses, and so should you.